Two chaos in the night, Olympic champion, three-time Ironman world champion, two-time Ironman 70.3 world champion, and yesterday he secured his first PTO Open. I say first because I don't believe that he's retiring, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but uh, Jan, thanks, mate, for joining us. I know you've probably been inundated with media and uh, and things and photos and, and all that stuff. But yesterday, let's just start off with um, congratulations and break the race down yesterday. Uh, we had you, well, I had you in the top three anyway, but uh, I had you in the top three or four getting out of the water, top three or four getting off the bike, and probably the fastest or second fastest run, and it, it came to fruition. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Walshie. Uh, thanks, everyone, for waiting. Sorry I'm late. Um, a, a limp today is costing me a little bit more to walk over here. <laughs> Traffic doesn't seem to help anyways, but uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah, what a day. I mean, honestly, what a day. I, I, had, a, I had a bit of a drama in, in T1, uh, trying to fiddle my arms in and losing time, and oh, gosh, I felt like... A 41 year old rookie um, <laughs> mistakes happen and um, you know it shows when you're nervous uh, it still counts still means something and, and that was definitely the sign yesterday it was a, it was a beautiful day um, thankfully I, I was able to actually enjoy it as well and, and savor the moments on the run and yeah kind of see at home and, and finish uh, at peace on American soil you know after last time I was here I think the race was cancelled because of a because of a, a thunderstorm or something crazy and uh, you know it's been it's been an up and down four years so to be here and uh, come back yeah, it's pretty sweet yeah it was um, major flooding thunderstorms in um, Sacramento a couple of years back so yeah so let's uh, let's break the race down for you uh, Jan was in a good position all the way obviously one of the best swimmers in the sport ever since he's been like 18 years old and carried that through you know the, the next couple of decades which has been insanely good getting on your bike you had that little mishap but clawed your way back up into that top position there in the top four which was so important because Bloomy was going to put the hammer down early we always knew that magnus was going to come through uh you know the field there and do what he did but mucky the air he was amazing yesterday as well and he was at the front there so toward the end of the bike ride magnus puts in the huge effort we knew that was going to happen inside the last two laps i think he tried to do it into the headwind on the way out and then started stretching things out. But you hung in there, put yourself in a fighting position, getting off the bike. Yeah, so um, to be honest, of course, this, this race I knew was gonna start maybe a week out because you know the new guard is here and they've arrived. And uh, as an old dog, you kind of have to think of what tricks you've still got up your sleeve. And um, I looked at um, actually Chris McCormick for some in, for some inspiration because he was the master of mind games and he was the master of getting into people's heads. And um, I made sure that uh, that Christian was inspired to lead the race from the front and go all out because I figured, well, if he spends his biscuits on the run uh, on the bike, then um, you know that could be a chance for all of us to to see him suffer on the run. And um, that of course paid out to some degree and when Magnus goes I mean Magnus is such an animal on the bike he has a, I think he has a 508 watt 20 minute test so that that's pro to a level kind of cycling um, I'm not even gonna try and compete with that because that it, it just wouldn't make sense so I, I stuck to my numbers uh, much to the dismay of, of my supporters because they're like he's in the group no he's gone he's in the group he's gone <laughs> and, uh, I was just yo-yoing back and forth, but I was actually just holding quite a constant pace, whereas everybody else was um, was surging, and and that's probably what cost them on the run, and, and gave me that freshness to to be able to quite frankly wait for for Christian. I I, I thought I was convinced he's going to have a cramp or two, and then he's going to run up, and it was going to be on, and you know the gap kept growing, kept growing, and I'm like, yeah, but he can still do it, and try and control it, and try and be there, and um, yeah, um, it was just a, a fantastic day to be able to actually savor it. So kids, if you can, uh, you know, just take something away from that, run your own race, right? So uh, when somebody goes by you, doesn't matter if it's in an Ironman or, you know, in a kids race or whatever, just stay to your numbers, stay to your comfort zone and let it all just play out. It wasn't comfortable. There was no comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go to your comfort zone. <laughs> all right, we were looking up at the boards there and, and a couple of times, you know, um, Magnus had gone to, I think he, when he made the break uh, on the second, the, yeah, the penultimate bike lap, 
his uh, max heart rate exertion uh, percentage went up to 87%. So that's touching on you know the anaerobic levels and you can only stay in those levels for a little bit. Um, but anyway, there was uh, one other thing. Uh, I'll do a little bit of translating. He said uh, he's, he didn't want to spend all of his biscuits. So he's not oh, talking about so biscuits sorry. and gravy. He's talking about cookies, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how we say biscuits in our part of the world. Uh. All right, but anyway. All right, Jan, so you bring it home, you get your first PTO uh, US Open, but your first PTO big championship win. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the PTO. It formed in 2014, and it's for the athletes. It's owned by the athletes, and it's owned by the PTO board, which is an incredible thing. It's creating uh, not only great income for the athletes, but the chance to actually earn a decent living. Well, I mean, you know, our sport has always provided opportunity, I think, for those that seek it. It's definitely there. There's a very, very passionate fan base and, and, and people who are very invested in the sport. But, you know, I think um, there is something to be said for, for moving the sport onward um, to a point that you keep, you know, your classics, the, the historic monuments of races, but then also create perhaps something that's more spectator friendly. I mean, this is kind of a mixture of the Olympic distance racing and, and uh, middle distance racing as we know it with the many laps. You know, for us, we look at it as like, what, what, seven laps? You know, try and lose count here. When we're used to just going out and back normally and, and it just provides more entertainment for everybody who's actually live on the ground or so, I think. Um, and, and I think that's something cool. It could be something that also makes, you know, for TV entertainment and just, you know, brings up brings our sport forward there's a tremendous push from the the next generation that i've said and i think it's a fine balance to strike because it's we're an extremely passionate crowd we all think we know how triathlon should be run and what's best for the sport but going out there and implementing change you know is is something i think that's that's kind of important because yeah it keeps people engaged it keeps people switched on and i think the pto is doing a great job of bringing events and bringing you know showcasing pro racing within the foundation of our sport which is you guys you know going out here and having your races and and combining it and giving an opportunity to go out yourself but actually also have the time to enjoy some racing and, and, and see what the professional racing is about and and i think that's how it should be done that's the strength of our sport you know that's what sets us apart from formula one or nascar racing where you just stand at the fence and you can wave like we're all out here together right and we have the same kind of conditions on the same days um, but yet at the same time, you know, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I think, a nice opportunity to also see what the boys and girls from all over the world um, can showcase. Yeah, and then also, you know, following along with the, you know, the technological advancements, um, to make these races fair, um, going back years ago, decades ago, we used to do, you know, triathlon with the, the Olympic distance and, and a draft zone of like 10 metres or whatever it is. And the PTO, you know, recognised that it needs to be more than that, you know, for a fair race. Uh, for people, who, you, you're racing for big money, right? This is your livelihood. And the, the advancements are that it's a 20 metre draft zone now, but you have 45 seconds to pass through. Now, the, the rule at, you know, Ironman races or USAT sanctions, uh, 12 meters with 25 seconds so I think that that's one great thing the other great thing I think was you know the race ranger has been introduced this is the second time that we used it at PTO level the race ranger is a system where there's a number tracking device uh, on the bike and then also on the rear under the rear seat there there's a light and if it's yellow you're in the right spot if it's red you need to go into that draft zone and get through and make the pass so i think that those little things you know and also with all the other advancements you know on bikes and things like that you on your you know your canyon uh, your bike you're yeah, just amazing you look great on that yesterday mate and just you know powering through so there are those you know advancements as well yeah let's uh, go back in time you started off as a junior how is it to enable yourself to have longevity in the sport because these children out here and the youth of the sport maybe going to turn pro one day and maybe want to know how it is to go through you at a very young age were uh, put onto a national team go represent your country and then all of a sudden become olympic champion and the coach yeah all of a sudden just uh, snap your fingers and it happens overnight that's uh, for him yeah so um yeah, I, I actually grew up in South Africa, and um, um, being a, a German, I kind of found my way to the sport. I only started triathlon when I was 19, so you guys are way ahead of the curve right here. Um, and it's great, honestly. Um, you know, the one thing I've 
always had is, is a genuine love for getting out. I've always needed to be active and I think past my retirement uh, I will still need to get out every day and, and just move, you know, because it's what I'm all about, it's part of my DNA and it's kind of helped me look at it um, as a privilege rather than a sacrifice. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, during school, all the parties I missed out on and and later on the socializing events and Friday nights and no hangovers and these things but it's like you know what I just I just like feeling good um, and it's just I think each to their own everybody has as something that makes them tick and for me it's always been that active lifestyle getting out eating healthy um, um, and enjoying you know of, of course uh, don't you know, <laughs> I just had a brisket burger while we're talking healthy eating but you got to treat yourself somehow and you know everybody's got their um, their, their poison and that's really something that our sport allows us to do you know we can go out see places meet great people um, and and travel the world and really I, I think there's no bigger privilege and that's something especially now yeah like you said I'm I'm old uh, I'm turning 42 ne next week I think um, and uh, it's it's, uh, it's cool seeing it in my kids my kids are five and seven and they just love getting out and being active um, and you know that with finding your own goals and finding your own pressure rather than pressurizing others um, I think is something that uh, has really helped me yeah, keep going all right well that's a perfect segue we'll go on to the next thing because um, your, your kids are going to be fast naturally because in 2008 when Jan won the Olympic gold medal his wife also won the gold medal, so that's incredible. Uh, never, never to be done again, I, I don't believe. Uh, anyway, so let's uh, go on, and um, you mentioned that you're going to be 42 next week. I, I read a little bit on social media this morning, a couple of the comments about your race, and uh, you know there has been hints of retirement out there, but um, my favourite little snippet was from another three-time Ironman world champion, Craig Alexander, he said, well done, mate, they're good mates, and um, don't retire yet. <laughs> so, what's your take? Yeah, I, th I think Crowe still hasn't retired officially. Um, you know what, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to exploring other parts of our sport, of having more of the adventure sense, trying crazy, I don't know, long distance bike rides, um, and, and, and just, doing different stuff I've, uh, I've got a love for the sport and it's like anything you know the best meals are the ones that are just a little bit too little you know you don't have you're never going to have your best meal at an all-you-can-eat buffet and that's kind of the thing where I'm at you know I'm, I'm coming to a place where I'm happy which is also a dangerous place to be if you're trying to win world championships because there is always a bit of ego and there is always a bit of anger involved and um, you know I, I find myself being able to channel it but deep down I'm getting pretty mellow and um, I'm loving mountain bike rides my kids uh, I want to go surfing I want to go kiteboarding and do all those things where you you know you, you miss out and I'm also a little bit tired of saying no uh, whenever my son asks me to go skiing or play soccer so um, you know, it's been a good innings. It's been a wonderful time, and um, I'll be true to the sport. I'll be around somewhere, um, and um, yeah, see what I can add value later on. Okay, real quick before we get to your questions uh, down there, Jan is going to spend a little bit of time over here at the PTO tent, take some selfies, do some autographs and stuff like that. Please respect Jan's time uh, during that time, but uh, start thinking of your questions. I've got like four shirts down here, so I've got four questions before we take Jan down here, but. Um, uh, Jan, just wanted to ask you uh, about the Scrail series because uh, Jan's invested in a uh, the Scrail series. I'm going to let you talk to it, but um, a couple of years ago he invented uh, some racing off roads um, back there in Girona. So take it away. Yeah, so the Scrail is exactly what I want to do. Um, we're, we're looking to, to make a few more races. Um, it's basically uh, an, an off-road triathlon with gravel biking and a bit of navigation. You know, you get your, you get your tracks and you can follow and it's, it's more of a communal kind of sense of event where we like to eat real food. Uh, it's not so much about <laughs> shakes and, and, and gels, but rather about having whatever it is out there. You know, we've had you know, we've had donuts and, and espresso machines out on course, and just living up the the fun part of our sport. You know, we can get a little bit caught up in numbers, 
Um, especially, yeah, I think it's something a lot of age groupers see as well, certainly not only us pros. And um, yeah, um, not living necessarily for a personal best split, but a uh, personal best experience. And that's kind of what we're trying to do. Uh, we'll have a few more events next year uh, going around and announce these bit by bit. And yeah, hopefully see a lot of you out there and uh, enjoying some of the adventurous part of the sport with us. Well, that's amazing. I'll be there on my <laughs> e-bike. <laughs> you're more than welcome. Actually, that's exactly the point. E-bikes, <laughs> relays, whatever you want to do, just as long as you're having, coming out and have a good time. Oh, yeah, I'm setting all sorts of ra ra records for myself on Strava. Yeah, but it's on the e-bike. All right, we've got some cheers down here. You ready? Who's got the first uh, question right down here in the Fluoro uh, Sunnies? What's your name? Come forward, buddy. Come forward, take the microphone, tell us your name and what's your question. My question is, when did he, uh, what is the hardest thing about triathlon? The hardest thing about triathlon right now is giving up. <laughs> um, no, geez, it's a, it's a tough one because um, like anything, you go through highs and lows and to keep on believing uh, in, in the hard times is, is not always easy. But I think setting yourself a goal and um, believing in, in your dreams is probably what will get you through those. So just, you know, dream big and keep following the path. Young lady, come up. Here we go. What's your name and what's your question? Thank you, Daniela. Um, so after a race, um, I like I just said, I like to have my favorite food or find some kind of uh, uh, food that I normally wouldn't eat. Um, enjoy it with some friends, uh, talk some war stories, uh, some battle stories, and um, yeah, realize that uh, nothing lasts forever. <laughs> So I'll take it uh, one step further with that. Um, spent a lot of time with Jan, uh, especially in Kona. His lovely wife, Emma, who I named my daughter after. Uh, she's an absolutely beautiful woman and she's incredibly smart about nutrition and, and diet. She may as well be a dietitian. Uh, she makes the most amazing food, but as you can see, Jan, there's not an ounce of fat on him, but he is very dedicated to what he puts into his body because what you put into your body is what you get out of it, right? So Jan, not only does he train like a madman, but very, very smart and calculated. Everything's formulated. As you can see, yesterday was an afternoon race. Now, it wasn't a morning race where the body is on a different clock. It was on a way different clock yesterday, starting in the afternoon. So that was probably a question I, I could have asked you about how you managed that nutrition over the last couple of days and getting your body clock set in a different zone, right? Because Jan, Trains in Andorra, spent the last 10 days in Lanzarote getting the heat acclimation and then came over right at the last part. So very professional, but anyway, about putting the food and everything into your body. So listen up kids, it's all about eating good food. So make sure you eat your greens. All right, I'm gonna take a question from this little boy over here. Come on up, buddy. What was your best advice? Hey, <laughs> Zina. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's a broad one. Um, um, my best, my best advice is do it because you love it. Um, honestly, it's it's that simple. Uh, if you if you find your love for something, then it won't ever feel like work. And what seems totally crazy to some people, the volume and the the amount of work you put in, um, is simply just. It's just your hobby, and uh, it's probably what scares me most. So I might have to get a real job sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you're doing just fine. Okay, what do you got here, little fella? What's your name and uh, question? So my name's Eli, and I just am wondering, what's your main motivation? I mean, not just in this race specifically, but in all the races that you do, what makes you think you're feeling down? What's your motivation to get back up and try again? 
Well, firstly, Great question, you like he's that? your shirt and I'm going to lose my job because you're going to take it. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm blown away. Um, you know, the thing is that motivation, I believe, changes over the years because you as a person change and where you are and where you come from will always be with you but it, it changes significantly and I think that's the biggest challenge of finding longevity in a career of, of keeping on going because when I started off um, I, I come from very humble backgrounds and, and my dad had to sell his bike so I could go to Europe uh, and, and race and with a plane ticket I was uh, like on an, on an old steel bike that I'd borrowed and you know my first motivation was just to drive a Mercedes one day like that's all I wanted <laughs> it was as simple as that um, but of course monetary motivation is, is, is seldom a good one because once you achieve it uh, that motivation is gone and you need to find other reasons and then for a while it was to find a place to to know who I am um, because you know sport is not just a job it's it's part of who you are and it's part of your identity and it gave me a sense of belonging and then somewhere along the line for me the final motivation just became um, improvement like finding my own my very own limits and, and that's kind of where I am now I'm just there's a curiosity that still burns within where I wonder how far I can push and um, that really helps me on the low days because I know that on the low days I've I've, I've done something to get there so I just need to figure out how I can go on and and, and, and get out of this hole and, and, and use you know every setback as an opportunity to actually come out on top. And uh, one note on that one, Jan ended up getting a very good sponsorship from Mercedes. So he has been a Mercedes athlete for quite some time. Hey, they, they, they just stopped their sports program. Don't applaud. <laughs> I just had to give it back. <laughs> I head for the hills, mate. <laughs> All right, we've got our last question. And don't forget, Jan's going to be uh, next door here. Uh, in about five minutes time, uh, you will do selfies and um, you'll, you'll be hanging around for a little bit, but uh, please respect his time uh, as well. He's got a lot of other things. Uh, I'm looking for a young lady over here. Come on forward. This is yours. There you go. Green Bay. Are you from Wisconsin? Oh, lovely. Okay. Um, I have a few hobbies. Um, unfortunately, dedicating myself to swim, biking, running, maintenance, I'm pretty bad at most of them. Um, I absolutely love cooking. Um, I like playing chess. Um, I like all sorts of sports, being active and out there. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to increasing my knowledge about wine with some friends. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. All right, maybe you'll see uh, Frodo uh, Wines out there. For Frodo, uh, he's got his own little brand there. He's um, got Frodissimo as well with the coffee and, and stuff like that. You love your coffee. You're very, very particular about how you make it. That's true. Um, yeah, coffee is definitely something that makes me a better person. Um, may I have a question? So, uh, for those of you from Wisconsin, what's up with the cheese head? <laughs> Seriously, what is that? I took one of those things home last night and it even said the original and I thought it was just like, there's a thing, but apparently a football team and everybody... Yeah, so back in, I think it was 1987 or somewhere like that, I think it was, I don't know if his name's Frank Bruno or Mr. Bruno or whatever it is, but I was reading up on it, he was the one that created it. Mr. to you. Yeah, Mr. Bruno, so anyway, he created it as a sign of like, you know, just supporting... Yeah, stuff like sports in Wisconsin and and lately the Milwaukee Brewers who are the local team here who won I think 11 won two nights ago and they lost last night but every time they hit a home run they get to wear the cheese head and they hit six home runs oh no sorry they got six runs in one inning the other night so I think all six of them were cheese head in the dugout so is, is this region famous for cheese oh cheese and oh, yeah. beer this is beer town, Mr. Frodo. And he's German, and the, the beer is not coming out of you because you heard about that before, right? He's probably going to do some more celebrating after he retires. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give it up for Jan Ferdino for giving us uh, his very precious time down here today, Jan. An inspiration to many.
I know that you've got a lot of fans out there, so thank you very much again. Yarn's going to be now going over to the PTO 10. Oh, I, actually, 